morning prayer in the service of the Lord's Day, anticipating our National Day of Thanksgiving, last Sunday before the Advent season, 20th of November, 2022, Community Church of Syosset. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellent and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and in the God of peace will then be with you. And thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>
praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will, I will sing, sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes. In the in whom there is no help. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob. Whose hope, hope is, is in the Lord their God. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the wicked, he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God goes on for all generations. Let us praise the Lord. Consumed with selfish gain. Turn our hearts toward love for others. Awesome God, forgive our eyes gazing at worthless things of this world. Turn our eyes towards your presence, your action within us and around us. All embracing God, forgive our hands that push people away. Turn our hands to the welcome stranger, the outcast, and the enemy. Watchful God, forgive our feet that too easily follow the easy paths. Away from your presence and our neighbor's needs. Turn our feet into your path of righteousness and life. By the grace of the forgiving transforming one Jesus. Forgive us. Make us grateful and generous, O oh God. And so we seek in the company of faithful friends movements of our God and the silence of our conscience.
friends, take to heart these words of assurance <coughs> that you belong to God. And we are rest in that truth. Your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. our study lesson this morning from the Gospel according to Luke in the 23rd chapter. Listen to God's word. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, Father forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. 
and they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, but he saved himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are not the same thing of condemnation? And indeed we have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this, but this man, man has done nothing wrong. wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. May the Lord bless these words of Holy Scripture to our understanding. Now, friends, today... Michael and I get to introduce Emily, Emily's son, who is a part of the Children's Orchestra Society, and she's going to be giving one of her early performances here amongst us. So what a joy it is to have her here today. Come on up, Emily. Come on up. Let's give her a round of applause. Emily just got accepted to uh, study at Juilliard Free College oh. at 10 years old. So wow. we're very proud of her.
Bach's Cello Suite is just a wonderful, yes. famous work. It's a challenging work. And Emily, I want you to know you did so well that I'm worried when I upload this to video that the copyright police won't think that I took a clip from Master and Commander. <laughs> it's beautifully done. And we all give thanks for the talent within you. Could we say thank you again? Well, if it was just Thanksgiving, we could say, let's give thanks to God for this transcendent beauty that we've experienced among us today that Emily has shared with us. Today is the last Sunday before we start Advent. We all know the Advent season is coming up, right? This Sunday, right before Advent, is frequently uh, called Christ the King Sunday. Sometimes we see Lutheran in Roman Catholic churches named Christ the King, right? It's, uh, it's very much out there as a, as, a, as a day to remember. So some of our neighboring parishes and churches have, take this as their very special feast day. Christ the King. But I would have us on this Thanksgiving Sunday take a look at the reading that the long tradition of the church has given us for Christ the King. Now, if we look back at the gospel, what do we have? What is the reading given to us for this day? We just read it. The crucifixion. What then would we take to be Christ's throne? I'll give you a hint. Above the throne is nailed Jesus Christ, King right, of the Jews. So what is the throne? The cross. Precisely. The cross. And for us to take that in for a moment, we might wonder, well, what kind of a king has a cross as a throne? Right? This is exactly counterintuitive. When we think of thrones, well, they may not be comfortable, but what are they? They're gilded and they're beautiful and they're big and, you know. So, how is it then we look at the throne of Christ as the cross? As we do. It's a powerful image. Well, in the narrative of the gospel reading itself today, I think we have the answer. Because, what do they say? If you are the king, why don't you save yourself, right? That's the question three times in the scripture. If you are this king, this messiah, Save yourself and us while you're at it, please, right? And yet, within 20, 30 years of the crucifixion, right up to this very day, what do we all say that Jesus did on that cross? Who did Jesus save? us. So for a king, is it to save yourself or to save your people? I mean, what do we think about a king or a queen in time of trouble who runs away? What do we think of that? We all admire King George, don't we? Not the George of our independence. We don't admire him so much. Uh, we all admire King George for not running away during the Second World War and saying, no, we're not going to Canada. This is where we are. London is where we need to be. They did not run away. 
And so one might say that Jesus also expressed not running away from the fearsome task of king. Rather, he stayed there, and we say unapologetically. Sometimes it's a mystery that we don't understand, but we say, no, Jesus saved us. Us. That's what a king should do. But when we think about kings, we think about grand people, don't we? Anybody here ever have tea with the king or the queen or anything like that? Uh, not recently. <laughs> ah, these are people that are kind of at a distance, aren't they? Fearsome people. People with your life in their hand, right? I mean, it wasn't that many centuries ago that if a king said, you deserve to die, what happened? You're dead, right? He held the lives of his people right in his hands. Not so long ago, a blip in the time of human history. That was the kind of power a king had. And certainly, did the king have that kind of power in Jesus' day? You bet. Ask John the Baptist well, before the dance. Uh, yes, the king had that power. So when we think of Jesus, do we think of Jesus as that kind of king? Well, we just said he has the power over the life of our soul in his very hands. But rather, I would look to another kind of a power. What about the person that runs and saves someone in trouble? How many people here are mothers or fathers? Most of us. Will you run and put your life in jeopardy? Will you run out in front of traffic to save your child? And will you do it in a heartbeat? Is there anything that will dissuade you from that? Such was the task before Jesus on the cross. This was his time to offer the very life of God for the people of God. Not like a great king in the sense we might think of one. But like the king that Jesus taught us he was. Where God is what? A father. Jesus showed us the Father's love, never ran away. And that love was such that it could not be destroyed by death. That's what the resurrection is about, friends. That Jesus' love, the love that God the Father had for all the people in this world, that God's love was stronger than even death, that that love that fully vitalized Jesus' body could not be destroyed. And so in resurrection, that love was made manifest for all of us for eternity. And he rose. And so shall we. For our lives too are caught up in love. Because when we say the Lord's Prayer, do we say, Jesus is Father? Whose Father? Our Father. Our Father. And just as the love of God the Father was resurrected in Jesus Christ, <coughs> so the love of God, our Father, will resurrect us into eternity and all of our lives will be written into the fabric of the universe. From the smile that we gave the, the mail carrier yesterday afternoon, to the glory of a piece of music, to the tenderness between a parent and child, to the devotion that gets us through a day of work we might not want to do, to the forgiveness we offer a person who may not deserve it, but we deserve to give it.
Friends, when we talk about Jesus and Christ the King, let us temper that, remembering that he is king not only, but kid. For we are the adopted brothers and sisters of Christ, created to know the glory of God to share his love in time and in eternity. So let us worship our brother, the king, our kin, for a kingdom and a kingdom that is coming into this world through love. May God bless our readings of Holy Scripture to our understanding. Almighty God, we lift up Diana Owen. You know her needs. We pray you will be with her. We pray to the Lord. Lord Marcy? My friend Marlena, who just had a baby, she will be battling some breast Bar Barmina. 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 Yes. Almighty God, we lift up Barb to you. We pray, Almighty God, that you will be with her, uh, save her from undue discouragement in the early days. And as she goes about the care that she needs, we pray that you will give her strength and that you will guide all of those who care for her with skill and with diligence. We pray to the Lord. Lord yes. Christy Carter, who is also battling cancer. Carter? Christy Carter. Christy Carter. Almighty God, we lift up Christy Carter to you. We pray that you will be with her in her time of need. Bless those that you send to care for her. And we pray for the very best outcomes. And we pray to the Lord. Lord George. For Arm Zev, whose recent conduct has caused considerable stress and distress amongst my neighbors. <laughs> Almighty God, we lift up to you Orin. We pray that you will lead and guide him to more peaceful and loving ways. We pray that you will show his neighbors 
how to exercise the opportunity of challenge and especially of good example, remembering always our Lord's imperative that we love even our enemy, that no one may be our enemy. We pray to the Lord. Lord Are there other prayers? Yes, Lauren. For Anita and Frank Raji. For Anita and Frank. Almighty God, we lift their up to you. We know that when people suffer from cancer, the whole family suffers along with them. We pray for Frank as he goes through his treatments, and Nina as she seeks to support and love him in the midst of it all, and for all of those who will care for them. We pray to the Lord. 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 Are there other prayers? Yes, Robert. The streaming is kaput. The streaming is kaput. <laughs> <laughs> could you lift up your hand, uh, uh, Karen? Karen? Karen, could you just lift up your hand? Raise your hand. It seems to be going. Okay. Thank you, Robert. I guess it came back. I apologize for the interruption. Not at all. I appreciate it. If I don't know, I can't fix it. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other prayers this morning? Yes, Michael. Yes, thank you for praying for my friend, Reverend Simulayan. He's now recovering completely from COVID in oh. Michigan. Almighty oh, God. We very big give you thanks and praise for, for Pastor's recovery. And we pray that it will be uh, to good effect without any long term consequences. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Lord. We give thanks, by the way, also, not just by the way, but with whole hearts for the Children's Orchestra Society and for the parents and the children who, whether they explicitly seek to or not, lift up in the transcendent beauty of music the spirit of God's presence among us. We pray to the Lord. Bill. Years this Thursday, and many happy returns of the day. Ad molto anni. Beautiful. Thank you. Congratulations. Yes, Michael. Bill, thank you. I just remember it's my anniversary today. Forty oh, years today. today. Wow. <laughs> and uh, my wife stays home to keep the twenty years. I'm here to keep the twenty years. <laughs> No, we are. Uh, on the day of Michael's anniversary, we give thanks and praise to our God. We pray to the Lord. Uh, we remember people on this Thanksgiving Day who are alone or who are lonely or who are hungry, those who may feel that they are not so blessed, may not appreciate or enjoy the abundance that they see in others or that they themselves possess. We pray for those who struggle with small-heartedness, as well as those who struggle with depression. We pray for those who are far away. We remember especially those who serve our nation in, another, in many capacities, and those who work hard to provide for their families, even on these holidays. And so, Almighty God, we lift up to you our prayers of thanksgiving. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for the churches throughout the world. We remember especially Faith Lutheran Church uh, this afternoon who will be joining us. And uh, we are grateful that we will celebrate Thanksgiving together. We pray to the Lord. Amen. And for all the prayers that we have that are in the silence of our hearts, those prayers that are private, those prayers that are only finding words, those prayers that we promised others. Let us search ourselves now and offer them to our loving God.
before we lift up the Lord's Prayer together. And this that silence of that moment had brought what brought to mind was the, the senseless killings that happened in Colorado. We pray, Almighty God, for a nation of peace where people will not be oppressed or torn down, where people will be safe. We pray that those who turn to violence be converted, changed. And we pray for all those who have lost loved ones. And so we are bold to pray together for a kingdom of peace to come. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God's people say, Amen. God is near. Amen.
So first of all, thank you again, Michael, and the Children's Orchestra Society for bringing thank Emily to us. Thank so you. Thank, you, to thank you, Emily. You did a fine job. Stand up and let the people see you one more time. And we hope to see you again. So thank you very much. Tonight, 4 o'clock, Okay, this evening, it's not even night yet, although it's getting pretty dark at four these days. Four o'clock, we're going to be uh, having our uh, community uh, Thanksgiving service. It's, it's, it's really mostly just Faith Luther and us to, uh, this time. Hopefully next time we'll do better and have even more churches involved, so we look forward to that. So anybody who wants to be here, uh, by all means, uh, come on out and support, uh, support the effort. So we'll be here. If you want to sing in the choir, please be here at 3.30. Um, otherwise, we'll start at 3, 315. Otherwise, we'll start at uh, 315. Right. Otherwise, we'll start at 4. Okay. So we'll see you all then. Thank you so much. And our, the, our congregation's president, Robert Owen, has some announcements to make. As always, please join us in the back for a snack and coffee and tea, etc. And I do not... I cannot give you the keys to the kingdom, but I can give you these keys that have been in the sanctuary for a good year now. They're to nice cars, too. So if you'd like a new car or you think these keys are yours, please see me. And lastly, if you work with computers all day, I have a pair of um, blue light reduction glasses that are supposed to work wonders for such things. You are welcome to them. I do not need them. Thank you, everybody. George. Uh, this, now, this morning, this is Dedication Sunday, and this morning, the, our chair of our, uh, uh, of our uh, stewardship committee, George Pratt, will be uh, speaking to you uh, on this one Sunday a year, uh, just for a moment or two, about, uh, about dedicating a portion of our gifts to God. Today is a special day in many ways. Dedication Sunday is but one of those days. The church asks from all its members contributions of time, talent, and treasure. We have sent out to everyone that we can contact so far a pledge form. It has three blanks to fill in. One is just a suggestion from each of you as to a project or an event that the church might take up in the course of the next year. This whole, the whole purpose of the Pledge Sunday is to lay the groundwork for the operations of the church over the next year. The second thing form to be filled out it calls for time and talent some indication by you of what time and what talent you may have that you could contribute to further the operations and the mission of the church and the third of course is the treasure that's important to give us the information that we know so we'll have some indication of the funds that will be available next year. So please fill out the form, put it in the collection plate, I call it, that is in the back. If you didn't bring the form with you, uh, there are extra ones in the back. Uh, if you can't get it in today, any time in the next week will be fine. Thank you very much. Thank you, George. And thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning. Uh, we do have Advent calendars. I, I, I think we can have our uh, cellist family enjoy one for if they like. One, two. So uh, if you want to have Advent calendars, we have some in the back. Um, and uh, just a free will offering in the plate will we'll take care of the cost of them. Okay, so please take them today, even though we don't really start Advent until the first day, the calendars, I should say, until the first day of December. Okay, well, that's it, I think, unless anyone else has anything. God bless you all today. Hope to see many of you at four, and have a beautiful Thanksgiving. Wow.
Your student? Yeah, but... Your student? No, I mean, he's with me. 